Hi everyone, hope all of you are doing great. So we are starting with our decentralized exchange. So we have built a smart contract. We have tested those smart contract and we have also connected the smart contract with the front end and we have done certain testing in the front end. So if you haven't watched that part, make sure to watch our link at the i button in the description so you can follow that. And now we're going to actually learn about the Uniswap. So it's very important that we have to know every single functions, every single keyword, every single parameters which Uniswap defined in the smart contract and in the SDK, V3 SDK. So that's what we're going to start right from this video. So in the next five to six tutorial, we're going to talk about only Uniswap contracts and SDK. And once we're done with this entire Uniswap, then we're going to take this knowledge and we're going to connect in our decentralized exchange and make that swap happen. If you look at the real Uniswap exchange, what happened there? When you want to swap the token, you are getting an estimated output. So you have to learn about that. You have to learn about the square root. On the base of that, you set the pricing of the slippage and the curve. So that's what we're going to understand. And that's what we're going to learn. Because once you have that kind of knowledge, you can build any application. You can build any logic. You can build any protocol and use it in your application. So that's going to be my motive. And that's what we're going to start. So instead of going with the smart contract of Uniswap, as I told you in the last video that we will start with the smart contract. But we're going to start with the Uniswap V3 SDK. That's what we're going to start with because that one is really big. So we'll start with that. Then we'll move to the smart contract. There are minimum things are there because most of the things we have already covered in the smart contract section when we are testing that. So we're going to talk about SDK, V3 SDK. So what we're going to do now, we're not going to write code in the project. We're going to create a separate project. In that, we're going to test all the V3 SDK. And once we're done with that, then we're going to pick these broken pieces and we're going to attach into our application so that's going to be the motive so what i have done here i have created a project and i called it uniswap test in that i have created a next.js application so you can see my package json file in this i have downloaded sorry i have installed these two packages uniswap sdk core this is the version and uniswap v3 sdk so make sure to install these two packages and you need to install the etherjr package they close this one and now let's test this out first thing we have to do is we have to understand what is sdk so uniswap provide two different methods which you can use to fetch the data from the uniswap protocol one you have the smart contract which you can utilize to fetch the data and make different type of calls whether you want to create liquidity whether you want to create an instant of the pools whether you want to do the transaction of the swap or whether you want to list your own token so that's all you can do with the help of the contract and on the other hand we have the v3 sdk and this is so powerful this will allow you to perform certain functionality at the real time because sdk will provide you a lot of power features which you can utilize is to calculate the price at the real time so when someone will enter the amount of the token they want to shop you can easily able to find out that how much output they're going to get you can set the alpha router as an optional property so they can add it or they can skip that so all that estimation you can able to do with this v3 router because if you want to do the same thing with the smart contract it's not possible because to utilize that we have to make a constant call it is possible all you have to do is to you have to make a server where you have to run the code over and over again you have to call the function over and over again and that will look for the change in the data which is really hectic task which we're not going to do we're going to use this v3 sdk okay so here i have my empty project and now first thing we have to do is to import the necessary states so we want the use state and we want use effects so these are the two hooks we are using now we use this etherjs package which i have already installed for the provider i'm using acmily so make sure to go to acmily.com and create your account and get your own provider don't use my so i have connected with the mainnet so this is my provider now i have to console log this out so simply console and if i do that you can see in the browser here my browser is repeating and here you can see here i got my provider and here i will get bunch of data so if i come into the network section you can see this is the host state, this is the EN address, this is the chain ID, one stand for mainnet. So different chain ID, we have different numbers. So mainnet is one, if you go with Gorilla, it has three, maybe it's three. So this is the provider which I have got. Let's come back here and now write the other code. So once we have that, now let me comment this one. And now we have to get the pool address. So this is the pool address. So this pool contract is deployed already on the mainnet. So you can simply copy this and if you want to know that what is this pool address come here in the browser and go to this 
ether scan i have already saved here and if i paste here if i paste here I, if i click on the search i can able to find this entire contract so you can see all the transaction is happening in this particular contract so click on this contract and here you can able to find all the function which exist into this contract so we have this libraries these have we have this Uniswap v3 pool which allow us to create pools liquidity a lot of things so you need these all things they have bunch of functions so we have this slot one we are using this one as well and there's a lot of things you can see all these functions all the data we have into the smart contract and this entire data this entire function is also provided to you in the v3 sd use this contract in our v3 sdk we need the address of this contract because ultimately we're going to interact with this contract so let's come here so we have this pool address that's what i have called you can call whatever you want so this is the address i got now I let me take a variable so here i've taken a variable in that i'm going to define the abi the function which i want to call into this pool address okay so these are the function which i want to call i have pre-written here so i want to call the function factory it will give me the address i want to call the token one so the first token and this is the second token i want to get the fee i want to get the tick spacing that's concept we're going to talk about and this is the max liquidity per tick so these are the function for the time being we are calling you can add multiple things you can add multiple function whatever you find in this contract so sorry this pool address contract so these are the video these are the abi we have taken and now we're going to make the call of the contract so we have the address we have the abi and we have our provider and now we can interact with the contract so we have all the important data we need to make the connection with the contract so we have our provider we have our pool address and we have the api of the contract so let's take a variable another variable so here i have taken another variable i call it pool contract and here i'm using ether package contract and in that i have to pass all these three data address mutable api and we have to pass our provider so we have this provider let's console log this out and save it and let's come back to the browser and boom here you can see here we got the contract which we are using to interact so this is the entire data you will find about the contract so we have the address of the contract we have this couple of methods we have the factory we have the fee we have the filter we have the function we have interface inside the interface we have a lot of functions you can see we have a couple of functions here deploy error event fragment function struct so we have all these things in this interface we have this max liquidity price that's the function we have called here you can see this is the function we have passed here and that's what we are getting so we have all these things token one token zero so we can easily able to interact with the contract so we got our contract now simply comment this and simply take a variable so here what i have done here i have taken a let and this is an object because i'm going to fetch the data from the contract and i'm going to assign to these objects so factory token one token zero token one fee tick spacing and we have max liquidity per tick so this is the this is the entire object we have taken and we have defined as a let because we're going to update this data so let's console log this out if i console log out you can see i have an empty object so you can see i have nothing in this this entire data is empty so it's working now let's come back to the code and here what i want to do is let's comment this simply take a function right now we are creating async functions and we are calling it get pool immutable this is the function we have here and we want to return this from here but this data will come from where so we have to get this data so to get this data what we're going to do is we're going to take a variable this pool immutable and we're going to assign this variable right here and we have to update this variable <laughs> i know many of you are getting confused because we are going backward okay but don't be confused so what i'm going to do i'll come here i'll take this this let this variables and here i'm going to make the calls so right now i have the contract this pool contract which contained all the functions and here we have the function so we have the factory function token one function token zero token one fee tick spacing and max liquidity per tick so we have all these function we are getting from the contract and we are calling it it's an async function because we have to wait for the promises and then we are assigning to each of this each of this so it looks fine so we are updating this entire data with this functions and finally we are returning from here so that looks fine now come here 
come down and we create another function so this is the function we have created get pool immutable then result and then we are simply consoling logging the entire result hope this makes sense to all of you guys what we have done we have taken our provider pool address mutable abi you can define as many data as you want you can go to the etherscan look the, look at the contract that what are the functions it has and you can get the data it's totally up to you. because these are the six common functions i have taken to show you to get you familiarized with the sdk that how you can utilize because these are the things we're going to use a lot and we have our contract this is the variables the data we want to take from the contract and these are the function calls we are doing and then we are simply returning so if i save it if i come to the browser you can see this is the data i will get back so just wait because we are making a request to the main and that's why it's taking a little bit of time so come back and finally, you can see the data we have here. So we have the factory. This is the factory. So here we have this two token. So this one is the USDC and this one is the weight. So to check that, come, come here and simply paste. Remove the two, this and make a call. If you look at this, it's a USD token, stable price. You can see the transaction, everything and all. So they have taken USD and weight. You can see the tick spacing is 16. We're going to talk about that. How, what is tick spacing? These are the two taken because right now we are taking these two data. And that's how you interact with the Unisoft. So hope this entire things makes sense. You guys have got understood that how you can use this Etherdash package to make a call to this Unisoft pool address. We're going to spend a lot of time around this pool address. We're going to fetch different pricings for the token into the pools we're going to create the instance so a lot of things is coming just take one one step at a time and try to make your hand dirty before we move to the actual stuff so this is the general thing we have done what we have learned from here that how we can use the etherjs package to interact with the pool address and fetch the data of the token which we want into our applications so i believe that you guys have understood that what we have done we have connected with the pool contract address and we are interacting and we are getting the data from there including the tick spacing liquidity we're going to talk hell lot of things okay so make sure to rewatch, try to understand and in the next video we can start with the little advanced things in that we're going to talk about different variables which goes into this sdk v3 so let's move for that